In this video, I'm going to be showing you why adding filters to your action camera isn't the best idea. Let's jump straight into the video. So you've got yourself a brand new action camera and you're looking to improve the quality of video coming from it. You may have heard that adding filters to your action cameras can improve the quality. Now these normally come in three different varieties, either ND filters, UV filters or polarizing filters. Well I'm going to be showing you why you shouldn't be adding any of these to your action camera. Let's start off by looking at ND filters. So ND filters designed to restrict the amount of light that enters your camera. They come in different strengths. The stronger the ND filter, the more light it restricts. And why do you want to restrict the amount of light entering your camera? Well, ultimately, it's to take control of your shutter speed. You see, our shutter speed, in partnership with our frame rate, dictates how much motion blur is applied to an object when in motion. Let me show you an example. In this scenario, without an ND filter, our shutter speed is 1 2,000th of a second, which is extremely fast. At this shutter speed, any objects that are in motion will not give off a natural looking motion blur. If we pause the video as this car goes by, we can see that it actually looks like the car is still. This is because our shutter speed is so fast that it freezes the action. Video footage that is recorded with a high shutter speed with objects in motion give off a jittery or stuttery appearance. As the cars pass, try to look for this jittery stuttery motion because our shutter speed is too high. Now if we put an ND filter on the front of the lens of the camera and thus reduce the shutter speed to double that of our recording frame rate, this is called the 180 degree rule in filmmaking. This gives us a much more natural looking motion blur on moving objects and replicates what our human eye sees. Compare this shot here with our shutter speed double that of our recording frame rate of 1 50th of a second with the one at a shutter speed of 1 2000th of a second and you can see that the motion blur is a lot more natural. And if we play the footage, we no longer get the jitters. Everything in motion looks a lot more natural. So you're probably wondering why it's not a good idea then to mount an ND filter to the front of your action camera. Surely you want that nice natural looking motion blur you're saying when you're recording with an action camera. Especially as sometimes we have them mounted to ourselves and we're the things that are in motion. And we want that nice natural looking motion blur to all the static objects we're passing. Well, there's just one problem with that, and that is the digital stabilization built into most action cameras. Simple truth is they're not designed to run efficiently at such low shutter speeds. Let me show you a demonstration. In this clip, we're running at 25 frames per second, but our shutter speed is 1 500th of a second. We've ignored the 180 degree rule, but the inbuilt stabilization is doing an amazing job on this bumpy path. Let's put on the ND filter now, reducing that light entering the camera so we can change our shutter speed to double that of our recording frame rate. So because we're recording at 25 frames per second, I need a shutter speed of 1 50th. Let's see how the inbuilt stabilization performs when we follow the 180 degree rule. Even though we're getting really nice natural looking motion blow on all the objects we're passing, footage is ruined because our action camera cannot calculate the stabilisation required to remove all the bumps and vibration due to such a low shutter speed. Let's compare this to our previous example. And even though our settings are almost identical, apart from our shutter speed, the difference in stabilisation is massive. Now in that clip there we was running a frame rate of 25 frames per second with a shutter speed of 1 50th and the stabilization just couldn't handle it. But what happens if we increase our frame rate to say 60 frames per second and we double our shutter speed to 120th of a second. Let's see if that makes a difference. So here we have a frame rate of 60 frames per second and we're following the 180 degree rule to make sure we get that nice natural looking motion blur. So we got a shutter speed of 1 20th of a second, but still the stabilization isn't able to cope with the vibrations and bumps at this low shutter speed. 
Well, there's only one thing for it. Let's whack up the frame rate to the highest possible, 120 frames per second, up in that shutter speed to 240th of a second, to see if the stabilization can handle it. Let's have a look. And even though the stabilization is improving slightly as we increase our shutter speed, it's no match for the action camera with no indie filter on at all. So there you go, even though you can mount ND filters to your action camera to control your shutter speed to get that really nice natural looking motion blur, you then lose the stabilization that is critical to action cameras, which is a real downer. You can of course aid the inbuilt stabilization by buying gimbals for your action camera, but that's the subject for a whole different video. Now then, that's the ND filters, let's have a look at UV filters. So the UV filter, designed to stop ultraviolet rays entering your camera. Now that sounds like a good thing, right? Well, if you believe the hype when purchasing one of these filters, then you'll know this is the go-to filter. Apparently it can do everything. It can improve clarity, make the sky bluer, make your grass greener. It can do everything. Unfortunately, it couldn't be further from the truth. You see, the UV filter was used back in the day when cameras used film roll and their ultraviolet rays would damage the film. So you had to use a UV filter to protect the film. And now because modern cameras don't use film roll, none of their internals are affected by ultraviolet rays, making the UV filter pointless. And to prove this, we're gonna take out the camera and put a UV filter on it just to show you it does absolutely nothing. you can see a difference with the UV filter let me know in the comments but if you're enjoying the video leave it a big thumbs up and consider subscribing to the channel so that's the UV filter and why not to purchase them for your action camera their only main purpose really is if you're looking for a replacement protective screen other than that they do absolutely nothing Anyway, let's move on now to the final filter that you shouldn't purchase for your action camera, and that is polarization filters. Let's jump straight into it. So the polarizing filter, unlike the UV filter that does nothing, the polarizing filter actually has a purpose. It can remove the haze in your images. It can also remove the glare and reflection from reflective surfaces, as shown in this example. So why don't I recommend using a polarizing filter on your action cameras? Well, as we've already seen with ND filters, reducing light entering the camera has consequences with the stabilization. Now, a polarizing filter doesn't restrict the amount of light entering your camera as much as an ND filter does, but it does a little bit. So we have to bear that in mind, but there's a more important reason why not to. Now with a polarizing filter, they're not a plug and play solution for your camera. I mean, you can't just snap it onto your action camera and forget about it. They constantly have to be adjusted and readjusted to make sure you're getting the maximum benefit from this filter. This wouldn't be too bad if your action camera is locked off into one position, meaning there's no pitch or roll happening to the action camera. It'd mean your polarizing filter would only have to be adjusted once and it'd work for every occasion. Most people, including myself, don't have our action cameras locked into one orientation, meaning they pitch and roll and bounce all over the place. This means that the effectiveness of a polarizing filter is reduced drastically, meaning you're never going to get the maximum benefit of using one. So unless you know for sure the orientation that your action camera is going to be in, I recommend avoiding polarizing filters. So there you have it, the reasons why you don't need filters for your action cameras. Hopefully that all made sense. Uh, if you have any questions, please comment below. If you've got something from this video, please give it a big thumbs up. And if you want to see further videos from myself, hit that subscribe button. But for now, that's it. We'll catch up in the next video. See you soon, guys.